welcome everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in and catching the show. This is Adam from Miller's Custom Guitars and the N Plus One Podcast. I'm so glad you could tune in. Today, I am joined by a very special guest. This is a friend of mine who I have known for, gosh, like 20 plus years. Pedro, can you, can you believe it's been that long? Holy yeah. moly, it's been a long time. That's ridiculous. I hate to admit that we're that old, but we are, dude. <laughs> we're that old, man. Ancient. Yep. I mean, I'm old. You're still looking good, buddy. But anyway. But this is my good friend, Pedro Tavares. And he is living the life, being a hotshot architect down in San Diego. He is designing and building big, fancy things. He posts stuff, and I'm just blown away. You know, I, I have to admit, man, I, I never thought you'd amount to anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just passing your balls, man. But anyway, I, I'm so impressed by the career that you are forming and your family is so beautiful. You know, and actually, I wanted to say um, I was at a family funeral. It was sad, but I was at a family funeral a couple Sorry. weeks ago. Yeah, it was sad. But one of the things that happened was it was for my uncle who passed away. But he, I guess he was like this stealth camcorder ninja. And everywhere yeah. he went his whole life, he had like this camcorder and you never saw him do it. He was camcording, camcording. And they said, Hey, Adam, you got to see this. And he pulled, and they, a couple years ago, they converted all of his old camcorder footage to digital and cool. they pulled it up and he had recorded our entire wedding. Um, the, the, before the ceremony, the, the, what do you call it? After the wedding, I'm just blanking reception. Yeah. The reception words is hard guys. And so he had recorded the entire thing and I had photos. But he had the entire thing, you know, and there you are, because you were one of my groomsmen, you know, and I'm like, hey, yeah, there's Pedro, crazy. there's Natalie, you know, and <laughs> so, yeah, and that was 17 years ago. So I just wanted to cool. say I was looking at him and you were looking good. So anyway, yeah, so you we should, go uh, way. Yeah, to upload that. That'd be cool uh, to see. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to get it. I get some of it. And man, you know, those those things are melancholy because, you know, so many people, you look back at so many people, those people have passed away and, and it's, you know, and the real, the real thing was. Like, man, my wife, she, she was smoking hot that day, man. I was like going, I, she, she walked on screen. I was like, man, she's, she was looking good that day. Anyway, yeah. anyway she still looks great anyway. But yeah. anyway, that was a fun time. And, and I'm really grateful that he got that image. And I'm sad that he has uh, moved on. But anyway, I just wanted to say we have Pedro on, not for architecture and not for rehashing old weddings, but because the World Cup is starting. And as long as I've known Pedro, he's been very passionate about the World Cup. I know nothing about soccer. And the thing is, this this podcast is all about hobbies, passions, and obsessions. We've been talking about frilly foo-foo stuff, like like music and art and drama and but you know what? Sports are things too, you know? And I figured we, we gotta we gotta talk about sports sometimes. And I, I looked at the count, I'm like, holy crap, the World Cup starts like next week. And I was like, Pedro. Come on and talk about the World Cup. I know nothing about it. As long as I've known you, you've always been super excited about the World Cup. Do you know enough to talk about it? And you're like, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> so here yeah, we are. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> but Pedro is from Brazil. And like, he's not like, oh, I have ancestors in Brazil. You were like born and raised in Brazil, right? I was born in Brazil. I uh, born we moved Brazil. from Brazil when I was five to, five. to That's Connecticut. That's long enough. That's long enough to, to say that you were from Brazil. I mean, I, I, I moved I from... I'm more from Brazil than I'm from anywhere. Like, I think, you know, sure. people like ask me where you're from. And I uh, often don't know how to answer because we moved so much, but... You were from Kansas. Like one thing you I know from is Modesto, I'm from Brazil. Right? I'm definitely not from Modesto. No, you're from, no, you're from Riverbank. Get it right. Jeez, man. <laughs> he doesn't like, like that answer, A little period folks. of my life, I had like the misfortune of living in the Central Valley. And like, no, that is not going to define me. <laughs> he doesn't like that answer, friends. But you, you know, it's the friends you made along the way, guys. Yeah, no, friends are good. Yeah, he's from Brazil, and you know, the, we don't really understand this being here in, in the United States of how huge soccer or football is in the rest of the world. You know, we have here in the United States, we have American football, we have baseball and basketball, and you know, to a much lesser extent, hockey and whatever. But for the rest of the world, football, soccer, is the biggest sport in the entire world. Everybody goes crazy about it. And so when they have the World Cup, like the entire world goes gaga over it. And does that sound right? That's incredible. Like the World Cup is incredible. And I think like the perception in the United States, like it's shifting, it's shifted a lot. You and I 
you know, I can understand why you might say something like that. But there are more kids that play soccer in the United States than any other sport. Like youth sure. soccer is the biggest thing out there. And uh, those kids grow up loving soccer. Right. In 2014, sure. like I, I traveled to Brazil when the World Cup was there and like, you know, ran into a lot of Americans. I mean, it's yeah. it's amazing. It's well, amazing, I, like how the world comes together for this tournament. And, you know, most of it's in a spirit of like sportsmanship and, you know, respect. And yeah, uh, it's it's a beautiful thing. That's awesome. And I feel like soccer has definitely grown. As you, you mentioned about how more kids play soccer. And I feel like, you know, that's definitely grown especially in reaction to when people started finding out how dangerous football really could be American football. And there's, you know, kids that grew up maybe playing pop Warner football, you know, when, when their parents started to see how dangerous that, that could be. And they said, you know what, let's, let's not have them do a contact. Let's just have them run around and kick around thing for a little bit, you know? <laughs> and uh, so then those kids were put into soccer and so started to see how great of a sport that was. And, you know, I, you know, I knew a number of kids that, that would, that just loved it and, you know, were crazy about it. So let's just, let's just start at the beginning, which is the topic in general, which is explain what even is the world cup, you know, like tell us if, 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 if I didn't know anything about the world cup or soccer, just tell us what it is. Explain it like you would to a five-year-old. It's a tournament, like a, a worldwide tournament of countries that send their best players, you know, they form a team per country send them to play in this tournament. It comes around every four years. And at the time, you know, years one, two, three are spent qualifying for the World Cup. So those teams for their countries like will travel and, and they play uh, regionally. So it's like, you know, South America qualifies and sends so many teams. North America qualifies and sends so many teams, you know, and Europe does and uh, Asian, okay, regional. Asian Pacific does. Okay. Yeah. So there's like a bank of teams and then the, the host nation always automatically qualifies. So mm. Qatar, for whatever reason it is this year that, you know, the bribes that got the tournament to Qatar, Qatar is in the tournament <laughs> with uh. no merit, but that's, a, that's how it goes generally. And so, um, you know, even the qualifications are like exciting at times, like, you know, Italy is a powerhouse in you know, global soccer and uh, they haven't qualified in the last two world cups. It's like super what? disappointing yeah, to a lot of people. And so uh, did they get in this year or no? I don't, I don't think they're in this year. Okay. So yeah. how, how you said that the teams are formed, you know, like, so each country has a, makes their own team. So maybe, you know, maybe similar to the Olympics, right? Where, where it's, it's every four years, it's, it's country, country by country. So, but how are the teams formed? They're like all-star team, you know, like you just yeah, go all-star you... teams. It's like, oh, it's wow. like the NBA or the, the Olympic dream team, you know? Wow. Yeah, that's what it is. And so a lot of like these players, like they play, you know, it used to be that they all played like, not all, but like mostly in their country, you know, they would draw from the local club teams in their countries. But these days, like with, you know, so much talent out there and like people scouting everywhere, there's a lot of Brazilian players playing in Europe, you know, and the players get like just recruited in all, all kinds of places, like to Russian teams and Japanese teams and things like that. And so like the team is made up of the best players that uh, you know can play for the team right like you need to have mm -hmm. like a tie back to that country yeah so like a few years ago like the u.s coach that took over a few years ago he like he recruited a lot of international players that had like you know some kind of american roots to play for the american team so it, it's kind of like that yeah interesting so i feel like this is a really easy question for you but how did you get started being interested in the world cup yeah my my dad <laughs> yeah you know it's yeah being brazilian is kind of easy right and kind of lucky at the same time i yeah. guess it's, it's kind of easy to be like a fan of something that you know you're like you've already got a tie to that it's good that the team's actually good yeah it's um, like being a patriots fan in the 2000s you know it's like okay like if you're from from boston you know, like okay well you know i mean they they won like every other year for like 20 years so you know <laughs> yeah and uh, like fandom isn't something that comes easy to me like i okay. feel like uh it needs to be earned and so like I, i'll be a fan of like you know like i said i've moved around a lot so i was always a fan of the home team which i think is the most appropriate way to be a fan sure um, okay yeah like i don't understand like i understand you know, some that friends but i just that are like i understand that but there's no there's no way i'm rooting for the niners like ever like get those guys yeah, out of well, here <laughs> fine so, i mean that's interesting though right because like a lot of people 
you know, where I met you, like, do, right? Mm -hmm. They root for the yeah. Niners or the Raiders or mm -hmm. the, the Giants or the A's. Yep. Because those are the closest teams and they all root sure. for the Kings. Um, mm -hmm. which, which makes a lot of sense to me. Um, it mm -hmm. makes a lot less sense to me for, like, you know, someone to be, like, living there and then, like, rooting for the Patriots mm -hmm. if they've never been there. And so, you know, like, I've, I've, I've switched my allegiance several times just because okay. I've moved. When I was in Kansas, I, I rooted for the Chiefs and the Royals. And, mm -hmm. you know, now I root for, uh, I rooted for the Chargers till they left and now they can die. And uh, I root for the Padres. There you go. Brazil is just, you know, they, I, I mentioned that because, like, I would really like to be a fan of, like, a, a club team, like in the Premier League, you know, mm -hmm. or the Champions League, like in Europe. I'd love to be a fan of one of those teams, but I've never found anything to, like, tie me to one of them. And so, it's been hard to like just kind of like throw my allegiance behind one but this is one of the few things like i can i've been able to grip onto in my life and say like i belong to this or this belongs to me and oh, so interesting yeah i've got That's brazil awesome. so what are some misconceptions that you think people have about the world cup hmm, the world cup I, I don't know you know i'd say like soccer in general though like uh, like people find it boring you know like low scoring game and, mm. which I, th I find funny I, I like both baseball and football but i mean they're they're a lot slower paced yeah that's for sure they, yeah, yeah like, look at, like the stats of football and it's like right. six minutes played in three hours or something right so yeah i mean i agree like if you you know football is is a game that's designed around advertising you know, it's literally yeah. designed for lots of breaks for advertising. And, you know, there are moments of, of high excitement and all that stuff. But, you know, soccer's a game. Y yeah, there maybe isn't a lot of points on the board. You know, I mean, you're never going to see a soccer game that has like 32 to 45. You know, <laughs> like that's mm -hmm. not going to be a soccer game. But, you know, a, you know, a soccer game that is, is one to one or one to two can be really, really compelling. And the thing about soccer is that like, you can't take your eyes away. The games I've seen, you know, that, that ball's moving, you can't blink, you can't take your eyes away. They have a hard time going to break. They have a hard time going to commercials, you know, because you know, it, it just never stops, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is nonstop. And I think that could be a large part of the reason it has had difficulty like you know gaining an audience in the united states just mm. because you know broadcasters don't really want to televise it because they can't sell ad space yeah that, that i think that's definitely true and that's I, I not just, why I, you see the ads on on jerseys right like yeah. the companies are sponsoring teams and like they've got their ad on the jersey and they've got the ads on the uh, scrolling side you know the, mm -hmm. on the yeah. on tv they put it on the uh, the side barriers and things yeah and i know that i've seen a, a couple a couple games that were that were so thrilling and you know it was in i think they call it bonus time or something stoppage time. They, yeah stoppage time where it was like the, the game was tied and mm -hmm. and the time had run out and it was like you know basically who knew whenever the refs were gonna stop the time and it, basically, it was basically you know, it was like some mystery number that the refs had made up in their mind. And th so everyone was so frantically trying to score and they were trying so hard. And so, I mean, it was so intense. It was so exciting, you know, because yeah. it was the stoppage. I mean, it was, it was intense, man. So yeah, def definitely definitely people are thinking that, that soccer is boring because the, the scores are, are low. They're not paying attention because it definitely, definitely is exciting or can be for sure. So what do you think maybe are some of the, biggest challenges for being a fan of a soccer football or or you know watching the the world cup well a challenge personally for me is that san diego doesn't have a major league soccer oh. team oh really so yeah so uh, you know it's one of those things i'm not going to root for like an la team i don't think um, rivalry between san diego and la is strong it's not that like if i lived in la i'd, I'd root for one of those teams you know they're, and they're, they've got two of them but it, it does bother me that like they skip over san diego and then it's like San Diego is known as like this, I don't know, not like a good sports market, I guess, which is why the, the Chargers left. And But I think that, you know, San Diego had the highest viewership of the World Cup, the mm -hmm. last World Cup, or the one before it. I remember reading that stat. Oh. And because of our diaspora of, you know, like there's a lot, a large Mexican population here, mm -hmm. obviously, right? We're like on the border of sure, Tijuana. of course. The San Diego team would be huge. So uh, I, I think that's that, it, like if you don't have like a local club team, you know, to, to get behind, like that can be tough to like, you know, not be able to go to games. We definitely don't have like what they do in England, you know, where there's like yeah. a team per neighborhood, mm -hmm. <laughs> which would be amazing. Or even in Brazil, you know, like there's a team per neighborhood in Rio. And uh, so you're saying you'd love to be watching live 
soccer and you, there's just nowhere for you to watch it. I mean, it's gotten a lot easier, right? Like I could watch like games in Europe. They, they do broadcast. But you mean often. like you'd, you'd love to go and see a live game in your in your town and there's not really a, an ability for that. That's no, it's not really so much about the live aspect mm. of it. It's just the it's the allegiance thing again. Mm. Like, how oh, gonna, OK. Yeah. That, that's my challenge. But I think for someone else, yeah, it could be like difficult to watch games when they're not like, you know, on U.S. time zone hours. Oh, sure. Right. Like they occur in the middle of the work day or something when they're in the evening over in New England. Right. Because they're uh, so the World Cup this year because they're playing it in Qatar. When are they playing the games? Are they going to be playing them all at night or do you know when? Like the earliest games start at 2 a.m. There's a game at 5 a.m. And then it's like, I can't remember, like 11 and 1, something like that. Wow. Late, later on in the morning. Wow. So, uh, yeah, it seems to me like they, they scheduled they scheduled like all of Brazil's games at like appropriate times for the West Coast or they, they end up on appropriate times for the West Coast. So I think that they probably scheduled the bigger headlining games like where they're not going to occur, you know, at 2 a.m. Yeah. And then that, that's just for the group stage. It starts off with the, this group stage where all the groups need to, you know, like there's four teams per group and the top two move on. So there's a lot more games like in this first, you know, couple of weeks of the tournament than there are later when it's like the semifinals, then quarterfinals and finals. Yeah. So what about being a, a fan of of the of the World Cup? What about it fills your bucket? Like what really gets you riled up? What is what is the most rewarding thing about it? Beating Argentina. <laughs> So if you beat Argentina but lose lose everything else, it's, it was worth it. I don't know. <laughs> what, what, yeah, I don't know about why that, Argentina. I, it's just this intense rivalry, like oh, really? Argentina. Yeah, which is hilarious because like it's followed me all my life too. Like oh uh, really? Yeah, like in high school, you know, I'd go to Brazil, like school in a Brazil shirt, and then like, do you know Nico? I don't. He's, he's like Mark Kripchoff's cousin. Mm. You know, like he he the first time I met him, he's like, take that off. It's just <laughs> hilarious, and I, I love Argentinian people. Like we get along so well, but. You know, you get soccer like in the mix. It's just like get out of here. <laughs> like, it's funny. You can't hold a candle to us. That's funny that you have that such bitter rivalry. That's funny. Do you have any specific notable bad experiences, like a time where you thought you were your team was winning, and then another team ripped your heart out and like showed it to you while you were still beating, or or anything? Do you have like a like a a time where a story you can tell where? You're going to bring this up? Yeah. Like, really? I don't know. I don't know. Yes. This is the, look, it's a scripted question. I didn't make this up. I asked you. Adam, guess Adam the last World Cup, if you're not aware, I don't. was played on, no, the two ago, two World Cups ago in okay. 2014. It played on Brazilian, like in Brazil, right? The okay. World Cup in Brazil. Brazil's playing in it's the biggest stadium, like in the, the game up the, the quarterfinal game against okay. Germany, where okay. it, it loses seven to one. And like, people are in tears, you know, oh. like. Yeah, the next day, oh. people are like, I woke up and there was a, a Germany goal in my fridge when I opened the door. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like that. No, it's going to haunt us forever. It's going to haunt Brazil forever. You just got, and, like, uh, baked. You just got totally toasted by Germany on your own soil. It was terrible. That's yeah. awful. Was it, and like, Germany a final or on, semifinal or semifinal or what? If Brazil had won that game, they would have played in the final. Um, okay, so, so it was, like, semifinal? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, Man, the final was Germany, Argentina, and at least Germany won the the tournament. Because yeah. if Argentina had won, oh, Brazil, you never I mean, would have heard the end of that. <laughs> so the game was the new Germans versus the old Germans. That's awesome. Do you have maybe like we'll call this the the World Cup watching and rooting for your team, Pedro Tavares signature move or maybe a veteran move, like something that helps you get through get through the the game. There's a lot of games. There are weird times. Like how? Like how do you, how do you approach this whole thing? Can't no. I, I, well, I, I invite everybody to like watch the game with me. So it's like you so know, your like signature if, uh, move is just get a bunch of people going. Well, if the game falls in the middle of the workday, yeah, and uh, you know, like we're in the office, everybody's watching the game. We just put it on, you know, like bring the TV out to like the the bullpen area and like you know keep working if you want, but the game's on, so you don't look like yeah. It's it's just a, it's an occasion at the office. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, this is a question I ask every customer or every customer. This customer. is a question I ask every guest: <laughs> Is do you have any guilty pleasures? Especially, I think this is especially with being a fan. I feel like there's a lot of guilty pleasures involved. But if you know, maybe another fan saw you doing it, and they might 
give you a hard time or whatever. I mean, besides hating Argentina, which I mean, there's, there's that's just pleasure. There's no guilt in that. But uh, do you have any guilty pleasures being a fan of the World Cup? Or you know, my my wardrobe gets like very simplified. Um, starting Sunday, like this shirt doesn't come off for a month. About, and I've got you know, if this one gets dirty, I've got like I've got at least seven more. Yeah, um, nice. Yeah, the Brazil type shirts that I'll I'll wear for the next month. Yeah. Your definition um, of business casual becomes very loose. Well, you should see it in San Diego anyway, man. Like <laughs> business casual, like it's, you know, whatever. It's jeans and flip flops. Nice. Yeah, San Diego is a cool place. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. So being a fan of Brazil and watching the World Cup, I'm sure you have a couple of these, but can you name one moment that has that you would consider your favorite or your best moment watching the world cup where you look back and you say this is it this is the one time that was the best moment that i can ever remember watching this they're like they're like two or three like I, I remember like great goals you know yeah and then obviously brazil's won the world cup like twice in my lifetime you know okay so i mean that, that was amazing but like great goals like i remember back in like i don't know if it was like 94 okay. i can google this there's like this goal by roberto carlos where he's got this free kick that's like super far from the goal and he goes okay. and kicks it with his left foot and the thing the ball just like veers like it's gonna go out and then like curves in right into the goal oh and he just awesome. like had this wicked spin on it it was amazing and it was the other one by i'm gonna put a link to that into the yeah, facebook the facebook group so guys I'm, i don't drop these into the video i put them in the facebook group if you want to see this put in the come join the facebook group and you'll see it hmm. yeah and then in 2002 there was one by rivaldo where he like dominated the ball like it was passed to him he like took it on his chest like brought it down to his knee kneaded up like turned around he's like facing away from the goal when he did that he turns around and just like boots it into the goal and that was a good goal yeah and then yeah. and maybe the last world cup or the one before there was this awesome play by suarez and quite kaivani where like it was just this one two play like they it just passed it from one side of the field to the next this you know suarez runs up he passes it up and then he kicks it, crosses it to the goal from like super far away, and Kaivani just heads it in, and I mean, just like takes it on the side of the face. That was an amazing play. <laughs> yeah, those. I, I don't know. I remember those goals. That's good goals. That's awesome. I, I kind of, I kind of relate to that because, you know, my favorite moments of being a football fan, you know, wasn't the moment when the Seahawks won the Super Bowl. My favorite moment was when Marshawn Lynch broke through 14 tackles to score a touchdown in the playoffs and the crowd cheered so loud that it caused an earthquake they call really? it the beast quake run um okay. yeah literally they the crowd cheered so loud that it registered on the on the richter scale and and so i mean that that play is i mean it, it still gives me chills when you watch it it was just such a it was literally ran through 14 tackles, just shedding these guys left and right, ran all the way like 52 yards for a touchdown. And it, it cemented us as a contender that year. And I mean, that play is to me more important than, you know, beating Peyton Manning in the Super Bowl that year. But, That's um, cool. Yeah. So, so let's say someone's listening to us and they're saying, man, I, I didn't even know that the World Cup was coming this year. I've always heard about it. It looks cool. I want to watch some of this. What, what advice would you give them? Uh, what would you tell them to do to get into watching some World Cup this year? Would you tell them to pick a team or just watch it for fun? Where do they tune in? Do you know where do they tune in? I mean, how do they watch it? Well, the U.S. is playing. Oh, we're so in? You can, al you can always root for the U.S., yeah. Is that going to um, just lead to shame and heartbreak? Or, or is the U.S. team any good? Do you know? I don't actually know. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully they do well, you know, or if your grandma is from, you know, Sweden, root for Sweden. It's, it's kind of like that. Like, uh, you know, we, we would secondarily root for Italy in, in my house because my grandma, I don't know, root for Italy. We've got Italian in our background. Mm -hmm. So that was fine. It's going to be streaming on Peacock, I guess. Okay. And like, we're super lucky that it's like gotten so much easier to watch because I remember, you know, like my, my dad just like trying to get the antenna going. You know, when we were young to get yeah, games on. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, it's, I don't know. It's gotten easier than ever. So yeah, I think Peacock is streaming it. If not, find a way to, you know, find a pirate stream of it and do what you need to do. Yeah. Awesome. And then we have a section I, and I, I kind of blindsided you with this right before we started to record. And I, I was wondering if you had had a 
chance to think of anything. And this is kind of a weird, a weird one for for this topic. But did you think of anything of, of a way that we could get into being a a World Cup fan and watcher right now? Can we get into it on the podcast today? There are these things that these like little books. Well, on the podcast, I don't know. But I was gonna say, apart from the podcast, like as a kid, I used to pick up these like sticker books. And, okay. This, this is big in Brazil, where you like collect the stickers of all the players and like oh. fill in the pages. I don't know so much about where you find those in the U.S., but they they must be around. Okay, I don't know where. <laughs> Sorry, either. You know, we can't we can't always do that that segment. You know, especially I mean something like being a fan of the World Cup. So this one to me is a, is a pretty obvious question because the, the name of the podcast N plus one and, and the whole idea of that is what is next. And I feel like the obvious answer is for, for you, Pedro, of what is, what is next? What is N plus one? I feel like the obvious answer is it's the World Cup, right? That's, that's what's next, right? And it starts Sunday, right? Sunday. Yeah. Do you know? Who... You know, there's a, there's a great app called Fot Mob. How do you spell that? F-O-T mob. Okay. I don't know. See if that focuses. That's all right. Anyway, F-O-T mob. And uh, you can track the World Cup on there. You can set okay. up alerts for like all the games. Do you know when Brazil plays? Brazil like, plays for the first time on Thanksgiving. On Thanksgiving. All right. That'll be a fun day. You get hang I'll out with family. I'll be my in-laws. Eat, eat some turkey. Yeah. And... I had to clear it with my father-in-law that he wasn't going to like insist on watching any college football games. Or regular football games. Is he a college guy more than a regular football guy game or what? Yeah. Guy or what? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We had a short episode today, which is which I think is fine. My last one was was half hour over. This would be a half hour under. I think that's fine. But I want to say thank you so much for coming on. How can people follow you if if you want to get that information out, or I don't know. You can be private if you want. I don't know. It's up to you. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I'm not really out there like that. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. His name's Pedro. Well, you know, just just watch some watch some World Cup. It's great. Root, pick a team, root for them. You can root for U.S. Root for Brazil if you want. And I really appreciate you coming on. But I have the two, the the whole reason I do this podcast, which is the two silly questions at the end. It's my favorite part. The first is I want you to, in just one quick sentence, casually say a sentence or two and casually drop the name of the most famous person you've ever met. Crazy Bone. You met Crazy Bone. I've met all the Bone Thugs, but they're probably not the most famous person I've ever met. The most famous person I ever met was probably Harrison Ford. Okay, Harrison Ford. You, you met Han Solo. Yeah, we were at this LA. You want to know about this? Yeah, whatever. You, yeah, tell us, man. We were at the this uh, pancreatic like cancer walk in LA. We used to go down like and do it every year, and uh, we did this. And he was there with Callista Flockhart, like just just like standing there. And uh, I I went up to him and I tapped him on the shoulder and I was like, Hey, could I get a picture, you know, of you with my wife and daughter? And he looked me in the eye and he like he reached out his hand. I see the camera. Where, there's there. He reached out his hand, and he's like, Please understand, if like I were to take a picture right now, like the, this place would just become like crazy. Please understand. And uh, I was like, Yeah, hey, okay, no problem. <laughs> so he just shook your hand and was like, No. Yeah, basically. But he met you and gave you the respect of shaking your hand. Is like, no, it's not happening. I mean, like he he like gazed into my soul and like, you know, gave you the like he, he got through to me. Yeah, nice. Well, that's a good one. And, and crazy bone. Nice. Well, here's your name drop card for dropping a name. And then this is the most important question of all. What is, in your opinion, the greatest cartoon theme song of all time? Animaniacs. Animaniacs. We have another one for Animaniacs. That's awesome. That's yeah. great. Okay. Well, Pedro, thank you so much for coming on, especially at short notice. I really appreciate it. We're going to, we're going to bash this one out just in time for, for the world cup. Uh, we're going to miss probably the first, um, couple games cause I'm not getting this one out, um, this week, but it'll be out probably next week. So thank right. you so much for coming on and I really appreciate it. Uh, say hi to Natalie and the kids for me. Other than that, um, until next time, guys, don't be a jerk.